Uh, Michelle Martin is asking, I've heard that Zen is a combination of the Yogacara found in the Lankavatara Sutra and the teaching of Nagarjuna's Karikas. Please, can you comment? I think that, um, that uh, Madhyamaka, especially as it came to Prajnaparamita, of course, Nagarjuna's Karikas were translated into Chinese too, and it became more prominent in um, uh, Tiantai tradition. Uh, I think a big basis for Tiantai was Nagarjuna and his middle way verses, um, which of course Tiantai became very influential to Chan and Zen. Um, so it maybe comes through that way, but I think even more Prajnaparamita, which we could say is the basis for Nagarjuna's teachings, is where it really um, it became very prominent in Zen, the Heart Sutra we chant every day in the American Zen centers is the, as a, you know, it's like the heart teaching of Zen through the sutras is the heart sutra that's negating everything as emptiness. Um, so that's a big influence and also Yogacara, big influence. And Tathagata Garbha, if we, if we separate that out into its own school in a way, uh, all three of those. And I, I, I kind of feel like between, um, you know, Madhyamaka, Yogacara, and Tathagata Garbha, that maybe Tathagata Garbha was most influential of those three on early Chinese Chan. It's really Buddha nature emphasis. Maybe later and, you know, from early days, but also later, maybe Prajnaparamita became more prominent and emptiness teachings, but they're always woven together very nicely. Yeah, I'll, I'll, and unlike um, Tibetan tradition that tends to, um, people tend to interpret more from one side or the other. You have the, and Indian Buddhism too, right? It's, there's like the Yogacara teachers and the Madhyamaka teachers. Uh, in China, they're not so conscious about choosing sides. They're very mixed together in a way that you can't even really pull them apart. Thank you. And uh, also, yes, for Zen Huayan, the, the Avatamsaka school, based on that sutra, but also lots of philosophy that got very complex. Um, the Hua Yan was had a major influence on, on early Chan and later Chan and Zen also, and the Chen Tai school of um, of Jiri uh, was considered kind of a founder of the Chen Tai school, very popular in um, China and in Japan. It became like all of Buddhism was pretty much Chen Tai Buddhism at the time of Dogen. Um, so then. Dogen and some other teachers started these new schools like Zen in Japan, but they were very, they, they grew up in the Tendai school, so very influenced by it. And just while we're on the topic of, um, of uh, Tendai, Juri, the sixth century founder of Tendai school, did write a little bit about Buddha nature. He was more into Nagarjuna and the Lotus Sutra were his main influences, but um, when he writes about Buddha nature, I, I find this interesting that um, he, he talks about a threefold Buddha nature. A lot of Jury's teachings come in, in sets of three. And the threefold Buddha nature is um, Ri, in Japanese we say Ri is like the principle, Li in Chinese. Principle is, is a kind of Chinese way of talking about ultimate truth or emptiness. Uh, that's, a dar that's like the Dharmakaya aspect of Buddha nature. And his, his analogy is it's like a gold mine. And then um, uh, wisdom, or jnana, or awareness, or chi in, in Japanese, is the Sambhogakaya aspect of Buddha nature. And that's like, um, Jerry says, that's like knowing that there is a gold mine, mm -hmm. this aspect of Buddha nature. And then the third aspect is practice, uh, gyo in, in Japanese, or um, skillful means. Uh, it's like the nirmanakaya aspect of Buddha nature. And that's like the tools that we can use to dig up the ground and discover the gold mine, since we know that it's there. So that's kind of 
a little different sounding than a lot of the Indian um, uh, descriptions of Buddha nature. It's a creative new Chinese um, way of talking about it, but that was early on in China. So that type of teaching filtered into Chan and Zen. That's really interesting. I've never heard that before. Yeah. Karma, have you ever heard something similar, this threefold Buddha nature in, in Tibetan tradition? No. <laughs> no, not in this specific form. Yes. I think he also, um, Jerry, even, I, I didn't bring it up because I thought, I wondered about this, but sometimes as he even talked about, those three are the three causes of Buddha nature, which sounds a little funny to me because we're talking about Buddha nature is unconditioned, but maybe it's a, in his unique ways, the causes of realizing it maybe. Sometimes in the, and, and Pari Nirvana Sutra was an important source for Juri's Tiantai teachings. And in that sutra, there's a lot of teachings that seem a little bit contradictory. Like Buddha nature is unconditioned and all pervading and eternal. But then it's also like, it arises dependent on practicing the precepts, for example. And um, um, it only arise, it, it's only, it's only really, Buddha nature is only really there for a Buddha. You hear that kind of teaching also. So maybe this idea of Buddha nature being caused um, is something on that aspect of it. Hmm. And we certainly have um, Buddha nature presented uh, in relation to the three kayas, okay? but I think what you presented is quite distinct, uh, quite different. Um, Especially in Dzogchen, uh, that Buddha nature gets um, mm. talked about as, as three kayas in, in all of us, in all sentient beings. Um, and you hear teachings like that, that's another Dzogchen Zen correlation. Like the sixth yeah. ancestor of Zen platform sutra talks about our own awareness is these three kayas. And he describes them slightly different than Dzogchen tradition would, but that same principle is there in early Chan. Mm. It's actually interesting you brought in Dokshen because in Dokshen you have Kadak, Hunduk, and uh, Tuzi. And in a way, what you said is quite uh, similar to these three. Uh, unlike the presentation of Buddha nature in the Nagoto Vibhaga or other sutra traditions. Interesting. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Mm -hmm.